Hey everybody, this is Gene with Motoclops and this is the install video for our uh, Back 4000 or Back 8000 power kit for the Telerius Sting. Okay, so disassembly is pretty straightforward. As you can see, we've already uh, removed the controller. Uh, it's really just uh, the front two uh, skid plate bolts we recommend uh, removing. So the skid plate can be a little bit uh, jiggly uh, and that more, has more to do with uh, part of the install. Uh, then you also want to remove the four four millimeter bolts that are on each side of the controller. There's two on each side. And then you're gonna be removing the power and the phase wires with the five millimeter uh, hex bolts that are here. Removing the upper part of the harness and then disconnecting the motor connector, which is right here because we're going to be shrink wrapping this and this a little bit later. Uh, the other thing that will make this install a little bit easier as well is you're going to be removing the four millimeter bolts that hold the battery plate in place. You want to remove those so you can pull the battery plate back this way. The battery plate is what the breaker is connected to. It'll make more sense when you take these bolts out. Next, we're going to install the phase wire extensions. So this is the blue phase wire. We're going to get the button bolt on and then our washer. and then the nut. We'll go ahead and tighten it. And you want to try and keep it as straight as possible and this will help later on in the install. Definitely want to get it tight enough to where you don't get any play. And then take your heat shrink and roll it over top. And that's staged for uh, heating up. And then we'll do this again for the, for the green wire and then of course the yellow. And there are the phase wires. So uh, go ahead and pull out. This is going to be part of what we uh, connect our converter to. And we're gonna put some uh, heat shrink on this. You are provided with uh, the appropriate heat shrink with each of the power kits. Uh, it is one of these big guys right here. Now, if you wanted to delete your kickstand, this is a good opportunity to do that now. Um, you can disconnect it from here. This is, that, uh, this is that connection. And you can use some smaller shrink wrap if you uh, wanted to waterproof that connector. So we've got our, uh, uh, our connection here, the motor connection there, and then we know that this white one from the upper part of the harness is gonna be sh heat shrinked as well. And so we've got these five things that we need to uh, heat shrink down here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. 
Now we're going to go ahead and uh, shrink wrap the, uh, or heat shrink, uh, the connectors. So what I like to do with the, um, some of the parts, you know, that you want to protect from melting other wires is uh, you can get a piece of cardboard and just put it behind there. Do your best to not sit in just one place on the, uh, on the heat shrink, just kind of get it around as best as you can. Create a nice seal on it. And just do one by one, just like that. Also take a minute to just look around, make sure that there's not any gaps between the heat shrink and the wires. You can tell you've got a nice seal because typically some of the glue will come down onto the wire. All right, all the phase wires look good. So let's do some of these big guys. These tend to take a bit more heat and a bit more time. So just like anything, just take your time. They will eventually start shrinking. You can always speed up the process by putting your heat gun on high. There's some risks to that because if you stay on one spot long enough, it could burn something. I don't want to do that. Now you'll notice with some of these larger uh, heat shrinks, or some with you know, lower quality uh, heat shrinks, they don't necessarily shrink all the way, which is fine, because you can just take some pliers. The glue is nice and hot, and you can just squeeze the ends. And they will stick. Create a nice seal. Great, we'll let that dry a little bit. You wanna look for gaps as well. Camera can't see this back part, but it's pretty sealed. This has a little bit of a gap, so it probably doesn't go all the way through the shrink wrap, but we're gonna try and just heat that up and close that end regardless. So that one's done. We'll go down to this one. You'll notice I've got these really thick gloves on. Um, I prefer to wear these, you know, especially when using the heat gun. Um, they're really thick. It's, and this is really hot. <laughs> so it kind of helps me from burning my fingers. Or if I touch anything hot, it's, uh, it hurts less. Yep, and this back is nice and sealed as well. So this is a good opportunity for um, a little bit of a pro tip, um, you know, it gets really tight when you install these controllers uh, and there's not a lot of room between the back of the controller and the front of the battery plate. So removing your tilt sensor uh, will provide a lot more room for your install. We recommend it 100% of the time. Some people don't want to, but we do. And that's found right below your breaker on the front side of your battery plate. And you can find some, uh, some heat shrink to go over that. This is your plug that, uh, that the, the uh, tilt sensor plugs into. And we'll just heat shrink that up for, uh, for this install. A 
And there we go. Now we'll uh, mount the controller. Now we're gonna make our harness connections and mount the uh, power kit. Uh, this particular power kit is our BAC 8000. So uh, first I'm going to put some dielectric grease on the motor converter. Connect that and get those wires a little tucked down in there. Then we're gonna do the uh, upper part of the harness. Get some dielectric grease on there. You always want to hear that click. That click is important when you make those connections. Uh, we'll shove some of this stuff up here. One of our final steps is we actually pull a lot of these wires from the top up here. But I'm going to try and get these up there a little bit to free up some space down here. Um, now, We've got our positive and negative lead. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect the positive. And the way that we're doing this kit is you want your Molex connectors on the top right here. So I'm gonna just hand thread these in. Get a little snug. Uh, there goes the harness. <laughs> After thinking through this a little bit more, we, we decided to go ahead and get some boxes to hold this, uh, this uh, controller up. So you've got this ground, this green ground uh, cable coming from the harness. Uh, that's important to get this connected with your negative lead. Very, very important that that is what it connects to. It is not a positive, it is a ground. We'll tighten all of these. A lot more later. So now for our colored phase wires. Our yellow goes to you. So yellow is you on the controller. The middle is green. And that is the V. And then blue goes to W. Get some dielectric grease on these Molex connectors and get those connected and we'll go to our next step. All right, let's get this on the bike. Now we're ready to mount the controller and, uh, and billet, uh, billet mount to the existing brackets. So you just wanna orient your controller uh, this way. We have tilted the, uh, the battery plate back to give plenty of room for the wires. We're gonna, that's part of our button up uh, is getting all those wires organized, but it really helps for you to be able to tuck this in uh, tuck the wires in and start your uh, start your bolts. So we're going to get this first four millimeter. It's good to get it about I don't know halfway. 
halfway thread it in just for nice and strength, but you can still wiggle it around and we'll pop over to the other side. A little too tight there. Okay. <clears throat> now let's do the upper bolts. Now with all four in, go ahead and get these nice and tight. All right, on to the next step. The egg rider in position. Um, we've got a two and a half millimeter hex. that we didn't go over in the original tool list, but now we are. So this you absolutely don't want to tighten too much. You want to get it just snug enough to where the display, you can't move the display with your hands. You don't want to crank it down. Once that is tightened, you want to put a little bit of dielectric grease on your high go. On the harness side and the display side, there are a notch that shows your alignment. There's also arrows on the, uh, on the top of each of the uh, connectors. So you just line up the arrows and connect. Now we're going to cable manage.